Hey guys, for this Redshift for Houdini quick tip video, I wanted to go over this new feature that was recently added, which is a viewport IPR mode similar to the Solaris and Lops viewport rendering. This is a really cool feature since it lets you render the viewport and move things around just like you would inside of Hydra, inside of Solaris. And you will need Redshift 3.040 or newer to use this. So if you go up to your Redshift shelf, there will be a new icon here called Viewport IPR. Or if you select your Redshift ROP, there will be a new button on the side called Viewport IPR. Clicking either of these will activate the Viewport Rendering Mode. So if we just click that, it will start rendering our viewport. You'll notice that we have a new HUD showing the progressive percentage. A reload button. So if we click this reload button, it will completely refresh and reload our viewport. These other buttons do not work just yet, but they let you know what is active and what isn't active for now. And so as you move around, you'll see that it works just like you would expect. You can move the camera around. You can select objects. So for example, we want to move around the uh, rubber toy. And you can make basically any other adjustment you would get if you were working inside of the Redshift render view. Right now, this is actually rendering a full 1080p render, so it's not as snappy as I would like. So something you can do is go back into your ROP, and underneath the IPR tab, there's a couple new options relating to the viewport rendering. And one of the most important things you could do is increase your IPR under sampling. And so this would allow you to get faster time to first pixel. So I like to keep that at five. So when you move around, you get larger pixels and then they shrink and improve progressively. And another big thing that will help improve how snappy the viewport is, is to use a camera IPR camera resolution override. So if you tick this on, you can override the resolution to any of these options or a custom option. So right now, it's using half resolution. So instead of 1080p, I'm using 720p. And you can see that it's already much, much faster to work with. And so use whatever setting you think works best for you. Sometimes one third is pretty good. And uh, you, can all, you can go all the way down to one tenth, which is really low res relative to 1080p. As you can see, it's pretty blocky, but it's very, very fast. I'm going to keep it at one third. I think one third is pretty good. And beneath this, we have a couple other options. We have the IPR progressive rendering. So if we disable this, it uses bucket mode. So as I move, you'll see that there's buckets flashing by. I personally like to keep it in progressive mode, so I think that's what I'm going to stick to. So let's turn back on progressive mode. The IPR freeze tessellation, so this will freeze your object's tessellation. This is on by default. There is also the IPR viewport optics denoising, so if you turn this on, it will start using the optics denoiser to denoise the uh, render in viewport. And notice when I have that on or off, this button changes color. So now that it's off, it's now white. 
There is also a viewport post effects and a viewport wireframe overlay. So if I click on the wireframe overlay, you'll get the wireframe for your object geometry. You can disable that. And the post effects. Now you'll notice that the post effects isn't really changing in this particular case much. And one of the reasons is because I'm using OCIO. And so if you're using OCIO, make sure to use it in Houdini because it uses the Houdini OCIO settings, not just the ones found in the Redshift render view. So you need to make sure in the color settings, you're actually pointing to an OCIO config file. And then when you click on this perspective button, there's an option called correction toolbar. This will bring up the color correction controls and the OCIO profile. So here you can see all my OCIO settings that I have. So if I switch, you'll notice now that it's color correcting the viewport rendering based on whatever OCIO LUT I'm using at the time. So I'm going to switch over to this one. And yeah, that that's kind of what how to get the uh, correct OCIO LUT loaded. The sRGB swatch lets you enable or disable OCIO. You can switch to log space. There's a couple options to also control the gamma and brightness. So you could go up an f-stop, down some f-stops. You can increase or decrease the contrast. You can increase or decrease the gamma. There's some options for the different channels. And yeah, that kind of covers pretty much all, all those little basic options. This is a really cool new little feature that I think a lot of people will enjoy, and I expect it to improve over time. If you guys have any issues, feel free to report them in the Redshift forums. As this is really new, so there you know might be some problems with it still, and hopefully the HUD improves over time. And yeah, you could basically expect this to update live just as you would anything else inside of the Redshift render view. So you could change colors and so on. So give it a try. It's pretty cool. Um, and that lets you render in viewport without having to switch over to LOPS. And if you need to stop using the viewport mode, you can just come up to either your Redshift ROP and click Viewport IPR or click the Viewport IPR shelf button and it'll disable it and you'll be back to regular OpenGL mode. So a really neat feature. I highly recommend you guys play around with it. Um, I think a lot of people will really enjoy it. And uh, yeah, so thanks again guys for all the support on YouTube and Patreon. I really appreciate it. Have a great day.